Be importunate. Neville Goddard talks about brazen impudence. Daring to assume that all things are possible to imagine, put this one reality to the extreme test by assuming you are the person you would like to be. Your reasonable mind and outer senses may deny it, but I promise you, if you will persist, you will receive your assumption. Believe me, you are the same God who created and sustains the universe. Don't take no for an answer. In the book of Luke, the story is told of a man who came to a house at the midnight hour and said, A friend of mine has arrived who is hungry. Would you let me have three loaves of bread? The man upstairs replied, It is midnight. My children are in bed asleep and I cannot come down and give you what you want. Then this statement is made. But because of the man's importunity, he was given all that he desired. The word importunity means brazen impudence. Having a desire, the man would not take no for an answer. When you know what you want, you don't ask God as though he were another. You ask your individual self to bring about your desire, for you are He. And God, your own wonderful human imagination, the I Am, will respond while you will not take no for an answer, as your denial is spoken from within and there is no other. It is within your own being that you persist in assuming you have received what you want. The story is, even though it was midnight and the family was asleep, the father came down and gave what was needed. Jesus talks about a woman who came to a judge in the middle of the night and asked for help. The judge told her to come back again in the morning. The woman would not have any of it. She kept on banging on the door till finally in exasperation, the judge opened the door and tendered to her needs. That's a few lines from Neville Goddard's lecture. And the last one was from... Ernest Holmes, if I remember correctly, if my memory serves me right, and often it does not, but this time I think it's accurate. So yeah, and there's many ways of dealing with being importunate, it's not taking no for an answer. As Alan Hatzel, for those of you who don't know Alan Hatzel, for those of you subs who subscribe to my other YouTube channel, I always forget to tell you guys that I have another YouTube channel, but anyway, in the links in the description box below, I made a few videos about Helen Hatzel, who's not as known as I would think she would be at this point, but she was known as the, she's she passed away at an old age not so long ago in two, 2005, I think. Anyway, and um, she was known as the contest queen. She was the I called her, I, I noted her the greatest manifesto of all time. She was just that good. She, I think almost each, if not all, of the sweepstakes, lotteries, and she had and games she had and, and contests she had entered, she would have won. She had won. And I, I made a video, so I don't want to go into too many details. She won things like trips to Paris, she won a house, she won a car for a kid, countless kitchen utensils and small small things, medium things, bigger things, money, etc. etc. She won so many things I don't cannot even remember. I strongly recommend you watch this video. I will link it somewhere. Anyway. And she always, she always used to say that there is no failure, only delay in results. And how, how does it translate for At one point in her life, there's a story in her, I think there's only one of her books that, that claims that she always wanted to meet this particular, particularly famous TV host who was famous at, at that time. I had no idea who he was, but at that time he was famous. His, his name is Art Linkletter. And she always wanted to meet him. So she had visualized, she was really good at visualizing. She was she visualized her meeting him. And she visualized him, she visualized him knowing her, feeling familiar with her. And the next day she went to the studio, unfortunately, there were no seats available in the studio for her and the other people waiting to get into the studio. So someone in charge came and gave tickets to and seats tickets to another studio for another show. And most of the people, almost everybody except Ellen, went to the other show. 
but she stayed put. She couldn't. She she would not bolt. She would not yield. And this young man who was in charge of all these ceilings and all this shit came to her and asked her, "Are you still waiting? What are you waiting for?" And she said, "I am here to meet Art Link letter. I came here for this and only this." And she got her seat. He went up and she told her. He told her that it, there was no seats. And he left, and he came back after, and she was still waiting. And she repeated the same words she told her. She told him the first time, "I'm waiting for to see Artling Meadow." So he he was kind of impressed by her impudence, her brazen impudence, her importunity. So he went back to the studio, and there was one seat available up in the balcony. Not the best, the best seats, but she got it. She went in and she got into the show. And at one point, I, I think it was a Christmas show, end of the year show, New Year's Eve show. And Artling Letter happened to stroll across the rows and happened to her eyes happened to meet Ellen Hatzel's eyes, and he thought she looked familiar. And he uttered those words to her, "Do I know you?" And she responded by saying, "No, this is the first time I'm seeing you. That's the first time I came here. This is the first time for me on this show." And he said, "Okay, and you are the one who won the grand prize, which was a luxurious watch, Swiss watch. I don't remember the name of the brand, but anyway." And she got she got the watch. And after during the intermittent break, he still looked at her and asked her. Are you sure I don't know you? And he and he obviously answered the same question. She answered the question with the same answer she gave a few moments before, but she was feeling a bit bad because she did. If he, she thought to herself, if he only knew because she was sitting on her sofa the day prior, and she was saying to herself and visualizing at the same time, Artling Lecker, I would be on your show. I will be on your show, and you will know who I am. That's why she was so great. And not only that, but if not for her waiting a bit longer and being more persistent in the assumption that she will get what she wants today, she will. She would have not gotten this. She would have gotten this later, probably, because she was that good at manifesting. But she did not, and that's why she says she said that there is no delay. Sorry, there's no failure, only delaying results. One point, she wanted to go to Paris. She wanted to go to Paris with her husband for a 40th birthday, and she entered many contests. And she won a trip. She won a trip. No, sorry, she won. She entered a contest that was offering a grand prize of a trip to Paris, but she did not win this contest. She ended up on the third step of the podium, third. So she's it's okay, and her husband told her it's okay, never mind. But she said there is no failure, only delay and result. And the next contest, she won a trip to Italy, which for those of you who know, is very close to Paris, obviously. Of course, her coming from America, and、uh, she was talking on the phone with the responsible, with the person in charge of this particular brand contest. And he said, "Congratulations for your trip to Paris." And he, she said, "I don't want to go to Italy. I want to go to Paris." And she, her tickets for Italy were changed for tickets to Paris. So she got what she wanted. And even though you see, that's a great example because even though she was、uh, gr- known to greatly to gr- to be great at manifestation, she still acted. Persistent in the assumption that she would get what she wanted, and she was moved to act in a way that there was no negative answer. She would always either either something will happen, but she would do what she had to do, and that that proof that goes to show that you can also yes you can visualize and all this stuff, but sometimes you put yourself in the situation. If you say like you, like Russ is a great example. Russ the 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 rapper Russ, he 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 said that. Like the the key to success is bouncing from failures to failures with relentless 
positivity and unwavering enthusiasm. I changed the words a bit, but it's pretty much this. And he published one song a week for years on end until one song took off and now he's a millionaire, multi-millionaire and being very famous and very successful. And he's a, a very, very adept at practicing the law of attraction. He read books like Napoleon Hill, The, the Secret Letter to Success, blah, blah, and those kind of things, and Grow Rich, The Alchemist by Paul Kohler, all this stuff. So it doesn't, the way things will unfold is not necessarily the way you want it to unfold, but it is the ways of God, the ways of universe that is that are too hard for us to fathom. But your role is to be importunate, not take no for an answer, and be always persistent in your assumption that you are, I am God. You are not God. You are God of your creation, and you can create with your own. Within you can create, not without. Within you can create. Without you can place yourself when you move toward this, like Ellen Hatzell was moved to, to, to put herself, to go to this place and meet Art Link Letter and not say, and not go to another studio and stay there or ask for a ticket to France when she got tickets for Italy. Things like that. Or Russ publishing songs every week until one of them took off and he's now famous. You know, that's, it's not automatic that you do one thing and everything will unfold. No. God's ways are greater than ours, right? So do what you have to do. Nipsey Hussle is a great example of Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle said that we always, everything he ever wanted while he was alive unfolded. Not in the timeline he wanted. We, he says, and I quote, he said, and I quote, that we always want things right now, but everything unfolded the way we wanted, just a bit later than what I expected. So as Ellen has said, to her point, there's no failure, only delaying result. So be importunate. Never take no for an answer. To quote Earl the Great Earl Nightingale, you, it's not Earl like it's someone else, but I don't remember who who wrote this, but you have to act in a way that it, you have to act as if it was impossible to fail. Remember this, act as if it was impossible to fail, and you can manifest pretty much anything you want. That's it. That's all. Be importunate, brazen impudence, Neville Goddard, Ernest Holmes, Earl Nightingale, Russ. Nipsey Hussle, Helen Hussle, those are all inspirational people that you can draw motivation and inspiration and tips and knowledge from, and myself included, I hope. Thank you so much for listening. That is the video for today. Be unfortunate. And please check my other YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description box below. Thank you for listening to the end. Please like, share, and subscribe. More information about me, I'm Sebastian, in the description box below. Facebook group, my five previous five group, my coaching if you want more information, and of course my books. Thank you so much for listening to that, and I'll see you very soon.